This is a quick tutorial on how to get started with FlightShare. After you extract FlightShare to a folder of your choice, go ahead and run FlightShare.exe. You'll get a red warning to get in a plane to start if you're not already in a plane and ready to go. The next step will be to get in a plane in the sim. I'll quickly click Mini to shrink the FlightShare window and I'll head to the world map. I'll then pick the airport I want to depart from. I'll also pick the plane I want to fly. I'm intentionally not going to pick an arrival airport. I'm just going to click fly. This is to avoid any potential conflict with the flight plan between the simulator and flight share. Now that I'm loaded in the plane, you can see my plane has loaded on the map within FlightShare. You can wheel your mouse in to zoom in. You can click and drag to pan around the map. One of the most useful features in FlightShare is the concept of waypoints. You can right click anywhere on the map to add a waypoint for where you want your plane. To start creating a flight plan, we simply need to find the area on the map where we want to go. Right click and say add waypoint. We can add subsequent waypoints by repeating that process. To see detail about these waypoints, we can click on the waypoints button on the top of the page. And that window will then show WP1, 2, and 3. You can set altitudes for each of these waypoints as well as the speeds requested. In this particular case I'm going to ignore speed because this plane does not have an auto throttle. However, I will set altitudes for each of these. You just click in the cell, type the value you want, and hit enter. You may notice when doing this that you put your waypoint in the wrong place. All you need to do is click and drag the waypoint to where you want it. So that's all there is really to creating a flight plan. So we've taken off. We are heading roughly due south and you'll see that our flight plan wants us to go off to the right. We're not flying over in that direction though because our plane's autopilot has not been engaged. You can engage autopilot in one of two ways. You can go to the cockpit and enable it if you know the buttons to choose. Alternatively, you can just click the master checkbox under autopilot control on the waypoints window. So I'll go ahead and click that. And you'll see pretty much instantly our plane is starting to correct its heading and make its way towards our WP-1, which is down here. Not only is it going to try to fly to this particular heading, it's also going to try to get to the altitude of 4,000 feet. And again, at any time, I can move these waypoints. If I need to make adjustments on the fly. One of the best features in FlightShare <clears throat> is the concept of visual indications in the sim. What we see here in the distance is our actual waypoint. It appears as a donut. I can also change that to a cone or to nothing. Personally, I like seeing the donuts as a good visual indication of where I'm heading. And of course, we can adjust anything about these waypoints even though we're in the air. So as an example, we could go ahead and delete this current waypoint by clicking delete and that will automatically set the next waypoint to be active and we will start our turn there.
There's also a bit of functionality within the waypoints window. You can name these waypoints, such as turn or descent. You can also right click within the box to set a given waypoint active or to change the altitudes and speeds for all waypoints. For an example, if I were to add several more waypoints, they will come in at the altitude and speed of the last waypoint entered. However, if I want them to all be 2,500 feet, I can just right click on the 2,500 and set them to all be 2,500. Just to reiterate, because we're only flying an X-Cub and it does not have an auto throttle, these speeds are ignored and the auto throttle over here won't do anything. While we're cruising around, we'll just take a look at some of the functionality within the map. So as we pan, we may get out of sync with where our plane is. So there's a big button on the top left that says go to my plane that will bring you right to the middle where your plane is. There's another checkbox for follow my plane. Once that's checked, it will cause your map to move in sequence with how your plane is moving so that you'll always be able to see your plane. The next checkbox here is lock waypoints. What this does is it allows you to freeze all the waypoints on the map so you don't accidentally drag them and move them. Uh, moving over to the left, you can type in an airport code if you want to be brought to a given airport on the map. Uh, below that, it would indicate to you any online friends. Below that is a wind indicator. This tells you where the wind is blowing to and how fast it's blowing. The number that's constantly changing down below is the odometer for the current session. That's how many miles we have flown this session. You can use the box at the very bottom of the window to send chat messages to the other people within your airspace. At the top of the window, there's a few things to note. We have airspace. In this case, it's indicated as alpha. You can change it to any airspace you wish. The five indicates how many other pilots are within this airspace. It does not matter which airspace you fly in. It's just a way to group pilots together. Next to that is the total number of pilots flying at the current time. Under that is your current altitude, speed, heading, and also a statistical number as to how many miles you've flown today and your position across all pilots for today. To the right of that is our teleport window. One of the key features in FlightShare is the ability to teleport. You can right click literally anywhere on the map and choose teleport and be moved there instantly. If you choose to do that, it's going to go ahead and use the altitude and speed that you have set on the top of your window here. The table above the map shows all the other pilots within the airspace. You can interact with these pilots in a few ways. For example, I'll click map on him and it will show me where he is flying. I can click MF on Mike and it will have the map follow his plane. If I were to click FLW on Mike, it will set a waypoint to follow his flight. So my plane will literally follow his plane. And if I were to click go on var Mike, it will teleport me instantly to Mike's location. I'm now going to demonstrate for you how to do an airport arrival. I can click on the airport symbol and the landing waypoint comes up. It confirms for me the airport code and then it shows me all the runways that are available. What it has done is it's drawn an arrival flight path 
to the runway that is selected, in this case 1-3. As you change the runway, you will see that that arrival path changes. So I'm going to go ahead and pick runway 3, which is most suitable from the direction that I'm coming from. You could also take into account wind if you wanted to be more technical. And let's go ahead and set this approach up. What I'm going to do is abandon these waypoints. So I'll delete 4, 5, and 6. And I'm going to use the landing page to create waypoints for this approach. I can easily do that by clicking this Create button on the landing page. Again, we're going to ignore speed because it doesn't apply in this type of plane. <clears throat> 10 indicates the number of nautical miles I want to do for an approach. And that asks me if I want to have a lead-in. Uh, I'll show you what that is as well. I'm going to leave it on. So I'll go ahead and hit Create. And you'll see it's gone through and automatically created all these waypoints. It created the waypoints 10 miles out from the field. And then because lead-in was selected, it created a couple more that lead us into that approach. This is super handy if you're coming from an odd angle and you need to make a wider turn. At this point, I'll go ahead and delete this waypoint because it's not really needed right now. If you see off in the distance, because we have donuts selected, on, you can visualize what this approach is going to look like. These waypoints were created at very specific altitudes in order for us to match a three degree glide slope into the field. I'm just going to demonstrate a few other features here while we're waiting for this approach. Let's say I don't want these two approach waypoints. I accidentally created lead-in. I can just go ahead and delete those. I could also move them if I was unhappy with their locations. For instance, if I wanted it to be closer to the actual glide path. I'll go ahead and delete them. You'll see that my plane has now automatically set the next valid waypoint to LD9, and that's what I'm flying towards. I'll now demonstrate the teleport feature. I don't want to teleport at 11,000 feet and 322 knots. I just want to speed up a little bit of time here. One way to quickly do a copy from what you have in the sim is to click on altitude and click on speed in this window. That brings over your current speed and current altitude. I'll right click right here and say teleport. Instantly my plane has now been moved to this location and because my autopilot is still engaged it will turn me over to that active waypoint. Here's a good visualization of all of the approach waypoints coming down to the actual airfield on that three degree glide slope. And again, our autopilot is on, so it should fly right down through those donuts. You'll note the last waypoint here is at the airfield and it appears in red. This is a visual indication in this waypoints window that that altitude is very close to the ground, but that is appropriate here. These features will work with almost any plane, especially those with an autopilot. Obviously you can't use auto throttle features unless you have an auto throttle, but everything I did here would work just the same with a Boeing 787 as it would with this Xcode. As we make the descent down into KTVF, just highlight a few things on this landing page. You'll note the distance as shown on the green value here. We're nine miles out from the field, our bearing, and the computed desired altitude from where we are. The magenta diamond it represents visually whether or not we're on the glide slope. In this case, we are laterally on the glide slope, 0, 0.0 miles away from it. 
However, we are 93 feet in that case low from the glide slope. So ideally, we are exactly on the glide slope, so zero and zero. Um, and that's what you would see if the magenta diamond is in the, in the center. So if your autopilot was off or you had no waypoints, you could still use this as a way to approach the airfield without having to know anything about ILS or setting up ILS frequencies. You'll have a good landing if you can keep this right in the middle on your approaches. Where you turn off autopilot is completely up to you, but you will have to turn off autopilot in order to do the landing. Flight share will not assist you in the actual landing, so you do have to manage your flaps, manage your speed, One of the real nice features about flight share is you can zoom in on the map and get a great view of where the taxiways are. Especially handy at large airports with a lot of terminals. There are literally a ton more features in flight share that I can't cover in this short video, but Feel free to join us on the Discord if you have any questions on how to use any of the more advanced features.